Welcome back to United Games Authority. I'm Shade Hunter. And I'm Phantom Stag. Today we're back in Sunken Land and we're just going to kind of go over the beginning UI ideas and functionality. First of all, um, in this first one here, the main UI in the upper left hand corner, you have the day and the time. Uh, across in the middle, you have a compass that does not have north, south, east, and west, but it does have degrees. So you can find out what you want in a within a degree number, and it makes it somewhat easier to go to. And then on the far right side, you have whatever location you're at, what level it's considered, and what faction it's part of. In the bottom left, you have your food, your water, your health, and energy. And there are different foods and stuff throughout the game that will make those either regen faster or come back faster or last longer in general. In the uh, middle of the bottom of the screen, you have all of your one through eight action bars. To use a, we a weapon or item, you press the number. If it's an item you can hold in your hand, you can just press the number again and it will make it go away. On the far right side, you'll see a little infinite sign down there at the bottom right. That's where your ammo will be if you have a projectile weapon. Then if you come down here into the water, underneath the water, an O2 bar will appear right above your action bars. And of course, I started a video and then it's getting nighttime. Then if you hit tab, that goes into your internal crafting and backpack inventory. And on the far left, you will have different types of crafting. You'll have the tools, you'll have the useful items, you'll have, well, tools and weapons, I guess, is the first one. And then the next one's different types of tools and useful items. Then you'll have different clothing you can create early on then your um, useful ingredients, I guess you could say, and then so health items. These distinctions are a little bit amusing. Yeah, so it's, it's very interesting on how that works. And then your backpack, which you can expand later. And then on the right-hand side, you have a bunch of um, armor and clothing slots. And then you have four asterisk things. Now, different things can go in there. Normally, you'll have, um, most of the time, you'll have a bunch of swimming gear in there, but there are other things you can put in there. Uh, for instance, I believe it's a diving, what is it called? It's like a diving skip. Uh, under underwater sled. Yeah, something like there. that. Swim fins go there. I believe it's like a scope that. goes there, I think, unless they've changed it. Yeah, binoculars, maybe. Yep. And then on the tank, yeah. there's a little tank slot. Your oxygen tank that you'll be able to make later on will go there. And you can also sort your inventory by clicking the sort. It makes it easier. And then up at the very top, you have a bunch of different tabs. You've got your build tab, which has all of your build stuff. And on the left-hand side of that, you'll have your cooking and crafting items. Um, you'll have another one that's for research and um, weapon crafting, your furniture and storage, decoration and defense. Your vehicles is down there where it looks like a boat, but you don't, you'll don't. you have to research it later. And then your light items uh, that will help light up an area. And these will actually expand later into more, th more things once you do your research. Then the next tab is a mission tab. Now, one thing that we have found out is this is not a worldwide missions. Each person has right. to build their, do their own missions in order to open up the next island in the list of missions. Yeah. The only one that you can do uh, as a team is discover the trading outpost. If you're both present on the boat, or if you both swim out to it, you both get it. But if Shade builds a wooden foundation, it doesn't have any impact on my research. I still need to build a wooden foundation. Yep. And then you have blueprints. There are a ton of blueprints in the game that you can find in the world. <clears throat> and 
it's it's extensive and now oh well i'm going to show you what a blue one of those blueprints looks like even though it's super dark i'm going to come around here and it'll show up when you get close enough it'll show up on your hud like it does right there and then you just walk up to it and press f the activation of this game is f and you just hold it and it'll take it and i think he got it before i did Oh, wow. Something that I got first. Now, if you get a blueprint, I believe it opens it up for everybody. Was that the... Uh... That was the scuba tank. Yeah, scuba yeah. tank, yeah. That's yeah, one thing that it does happen. are team-wide, so that's nice. However, um, there is a Discover Blueprints... And that, I get one of three, but if Shade looks in his mission, he should have zero of three. Yes, I have yeah, zero of three. He, he didn't discover it. It's now available for him as a craftable item, but he did not discover it, so he still has to go and discover that himself. So that's how that works. Oh, to use things in, in your inventory, it'll say, say uh, to right-click, and you can just right-click to eat or drink. I had to because I've been standing here doing nothing, and apparently I was dying of hunger. So the next in line after Blueprints is a map, and this is this map is, like, I swear, like eight times bigger than it was when we first got the game. And they've added a ton more locations, so it's it's a pretty big game. I mean, if you look at the normal world, it's everything looks you know decent sized. I mean, everything's pretty big. I mean, but then you look at the map and realize just how small you are in this massive world that they have created. So it's pretty cool. Yep. And then you have the faction list. You have mutants, marauders, slavers, the Salvation Clan, Hunters Union, Warhead Tribes. Now, from what I can tell, because this game does not have levels, it will decide who comes after you on who you find and yes. your power level. So generally speaking, you're going to come across mutants first, and then you will start getting attacked once you find them. That's what I've figured out. We might find out differently later. But that's kind of the way I've seen it so far. And there are yeah, a ton of enemies. Our experience. That's been our experiences uh, so far. That hasn't changed as they've uh, done updates to the game. That continues to be the case. So I, I think that's just a core mechanic that they're going to be keeping. And that's uh, it. Aside from isolation, is not a guarantee of protection, but it will definitely, it will definitely keep them away from you longer. Yeah, and I would highly suggest not building on an island. Uh, we've done that before. It makes it quite difficult to defend. Uh, one one thing about the no leveling system is you level up with whatever technology you unlock and can find. Because it all be, your your defenses and offensive are all dependent on the gear you have and the weapons you use. Yep. So that's it. That's what I'm one thing I really like about this game. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the the whole UI system. We will get into different UIs when we get different benches and that we have to use. But for right now, that's it. Thank you all for coming. Really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If any of this was remotely helpful, please hit the like button. And you know it was. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch and you. you know you do. On the flip side. Later. <laughs> Later.